Woo! Pro Guys family, Bunch of Crunch Army. Where you at? Your motivation guy is back. So pumped up because in this video, we're going to be looking at five of the best drop spots for Arena in season five. Now, the maps definitely changed quite a bit with this new season. You know, we've got fresh arrangement of new zones, stuff added to old ones. And uh, on top of that, those NPCs, they're everywhere. Some of which are pretty useful. Still, you know, when it comes to climbing up an arena, it is vital to find a spot that balances excellent loot path and materials, you know, while at the same time, not attracting too many players. And so those are the kind of locations that we want to talk about in today's video. So for our first drop spot, we have the Viking ship. Just west of Holly Hedges, this spot is surprisingly impressive, guys. I mean, it does have a solid amount of loot for solos and some good material nearby, but what it makes it special is Ragnarok. Now, Ragnarok's kind of cool in that you can actually challenge him to a duel, and if you beat him, he'll always drop a purple SMG. And I'm sure we all know that with the pump vaulted and the current shotguns not being the funnest to play with, that this guaranteed SMG can definitely come in handy while fighting. But as of how you approach a landing here, you actually have a few options. Like, the ship has a couple of chests, but personally, we like to scout the building rooftop for a weapon, head inside the room on the roof for a chest, and then loot the rest of the building. This way, you can have more loot and materials in case you need Need to fight but if you're uncontested well, you might as well just land on the ship and just work your way down oh and uh also there's another chest and an ice freezer that spawn at the gas station so hit that up before you rotate out as for where to head afterwards, I mean, it depends mostly on how you want to play it, but a really good strategy can be third partying Holly Hedges. If you see builds or you hear gunshots, try to capitalize by pushing before the fight finishes. By the time you get there, players will either be in a fight or just finishing one, so you might be able to pull off a nice sneak attack and get a cheeky kill. Still, if you rather, just play it safe. Your best bet is finding a vehicle on the road than heading north. You can go to the house that's shaped like a sideways H for another three chests, but unfortunately, it now now it has those annoying IO guards just spawn out front. Still, I mean, that's not a bad thing since they do drop a tactical AR and minis when you do beat them, so you can just end up with a lot more shields coming up here if you can. If that's something that you value having and you feel like it helps you win fights, definitely check this spot out before everyone finds it. And look, for more tips on how to climb arena, you should definitely talk with one of our coaches, all right? They're going to work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you figure out whatever problems you have, whether that be with loot pass or building or even aiming. And, you know, you can improve a whole lot quicker. If that sounds good to you guys, yo, check it out by clicking here. Next, drop spot number three is going to be the ghost house. Don't worry, the building isn't haunted or anything like that. But what we want to talk about in this season is the fact that there's sand and those zero point crystals nearby, which makes continuing the loot path a lot faster. But basically, you might be contesting when you land at the ghost house. So work on perfecting a low drop so that you can always guarantee landing first on the roof for any visible chest or weapon spawn. And if at any point you think someone is beating you to the top, just try to land on the ground floor and just go for a chest or weapon spawn inside. In total, though, there are five potential chest spawns in this building. Other than that, there's a healthy amount of wood pallets, ammo boxes, and an underground safe that can contain gold bars and a plethora of rocks nearby that should get you to max brick. Though, once done looting and farming, head east up the small hill to the cabin, which has some floor loot and another chest if you're lucky. From here, and I mean like right here, sink in the sand and head even further east to the gorgeous gorge waterfall. Loot the bridge, then drop into the river to get the two chests down there and you can also just climb up to get the third one if you feel like it but from here all right how you want to proceed is totally up to you just like with the viking ship like you could go flank lazy leg to clean up any stragglers if you're feeling feisty all right but if you rather just focus on getting the w all right i say just continue your path by just heading northeast to see if that restaurant and gas station is unlooted overall with the 50 percent spawn rate you should be averaging about seven chests each game with this path which is actually not bad at all for a job spot where you're gonna have at most maybe have to fight one person now, our next spot is Dirty Docks, which in contrast to our previous location might attract more players. However, if you're willing to fight just one or two players off spawn, it's likely you're going to be driving off into the sunset with some of the best loot in your lobby. Seriously, Dirty Docks has something like 34 chests, man, which is among the highest for any POI in the game. And yet, for some reason, most of us completely fail to appreciate how good it is. I mean, yeah, it's pretty far from the center of the map. I get it. But ever since they added cars, it's really not that big of a deal anymore. 
anymore. In fact, the remote location actually works in our favor since almost nobody is going to be rotating into Dirty. So we don't really have to worry about people coming in late. And one more reason Dirty's a top tier zone is because there's so much metal. So Dirty's terrific. But the big question is, where do you land? Well, both the north half and the south half of Dirty have their own pros and cons. For one, I mean, the north half is more densely packed with chests, making it a bit easier to secure loot. But the south half tends to attract fewer players and has closer fishing spots, making it less likely you're gonna get into an immediate off-spawn battle. All right, so with that said, if you're absolutely nuts at getting low landings, the big warehouse in the back is the best spot to land on. It has five chests and an extra one out back a good number of materials to get the ball rolling and the rooftop is nice and high i mean you could just perch up there just to look for big openings on unlucky opponents that landed with you what's also important is that since this warehouse is in the back you're less likely to get sandwiched in between two enemy players than if you were to land at say somewhere in the middle and that's another aspect not many people think about you know that can actually be somewhat crucial when it comes to winning the early game so all together we feel that dirty docks is slept on a little too much for how good it actually is of course you know you gotta expect a fight with named pois but if you come out victorious continue focusing on looting farming efficient sources of metal and getting a vehicle when the storm comes so you can just rotate to the next zone All right, guys, moving on. The next drop spot we're going to be looking at is Rainbow Rentals. This set of five beach houses located on the western edge of the map. In total, there are four chest spawns here, all right? The green house contains two of them, the middle house has one, and the westmost house has another outback. Five chest spawns isn't a whole lot, but what makes this spot great are all the fishing spots. Obviously, I mean, you can get a lot of incredibly useful fish from them, including the brand new elusive rift fish that's gonna be huge this meta, by the way. But another thing that they offer are pretty good weapons like snipers and even high rarity shotguns. So the primary purpose of this spot is definitely those fishing holes. So as you're flying in for your landing, all right, let me say this. Try to aim for the greenhouse since that has the best chance at loot, which you're going to need in case you're contested. But other than that, break all the metal furniture you can find and just pop all the fishing rod barrels for a harpoon. If you don't get one, just settle for a fishing rod and just head out to the water to start reeling some really, really good goodies in. Since you're going to be fishing, it's a good idea just to hold onto your shields or at your big pots for as long as you can just in case you find a shield fish since those aren't as easily stackable. But if you still still have time and you want to fish some more, all right, you got a couple of options. Either head south to the swampy area where there are a ton of scattered chests, slurp kegs, and fishing holes everywhere. Or if the zone is more north, I suggest swimming up the coast of that direction where you can just hit up a massive pile of rocks on the shore along with another chest that can spawn here. And after you get max brick there, continue swimming north and you're going to arrive at some more fishing holes as well as these two small rocky islands, each with a potential chest spawn. So to include rainbow rentals and the multiple paths that you can take will net you something like five chests per game which isn't a lot but remember this all right hardly anybody lands here and you're going to end up looting a ton of fishing holes which can honestly contain some jaw dropping loot right so even with the low chest count you're still going to end up with a crazy stack kit all right, lastly, guys, our final drop spot for this video is the ski resort or a press ski. I'm not going to do that again. Don't worry about it. Anyways, the ski resort is located on the mountain southwest of Misty Meadows, and it has a few things going for it. All right, several chests, lots of floor loot, good wood and brick on your rotation as well. And for you hungry players, a bounty board that's gonna show the location of a nearby enemy should you accept the bounty. But since the chest spawns are still a coin toss, we personally prefer aiming for any weapon spawns and the heading for the basement door, just to avoid the potential awkward situation if the roof chest doesn't spawn and someone lands on the main floor. From here, we loot up every room and just make sure to hit every source of material, especially metal, since obviously that's a lot more challenging to acquire on this loot pad. Once you finish looting the lodge and you get the campfire chest outside, what's fantastic is that you got a couple of options on where to go next, depending on your loot preference. The first option is to head south. All right, check the smaller cabin below for some more loot and then hit up the shore. One chest can just spawn at the dock and one in the red container, but the most significant reason to come down here is for fish. A few fishing spots can spawn here, and there are even more if you swim along the coast of the west. But still, I get it, not everybody is excited about fishing. So your other option is just to slide down the hill and get the cabin east, and then the one to the north of it. Just make sure of two things, all right? One, you need to farm all the big rocks and good sources of wood, and two, 
When you're landing at the Ski Lodge, scout these two cabins for potential opponents since some Misty players like to drop here first. After those two cabins, head up to the road, find a vehicle, and head west to the gas station. Here, okay, you can get a couple more chests and a few slurp barrels just out back, which by the way, now gives all the shields they're supposed to when you break them with build. So just build a quick cone over them and you're gonna get all this slurp right away. Spark plug, one of those quest givers also has a chance to spawn here and you can just use her to get some easy gold bars or even upgrade your weapon. However, she does show up at other gas stations too, so you won't find her here every game. But once you're done here, you can just get back in your vehicle and use it to rotate to the next zone. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today's video for the drop spots. You know, we're gonna leave some timestamps so you know you can just go check them out again if you guys want. But if you enjoyed this video, give the video a like. And if you're looking for more drop spots to abuse for easy points, you gotta check out our video from last season up here. All four of the drop spots we showed in that video are still relatively unknown and you know just as viable to use in season five. So make sure to take a look and we'll definitely do another drop spot video this season. So subscribe with that bell button turned on so you don't miss out on what's coming up next once again bunch of crunch army i am your motivation guy keith allen and i'll see you soon